Hi everyone, I'm Magic Dave, and this is Sapiens. So it's been about three weeks since my last video, and I've done about two weeks of work in that time. I've just been a little bit busy with family and things, but I'm back to it. And I've got quite a lot done in that time too, so let me show you some of that stuff. So one of the major problems you might have seen in one of the last videos is that I was trying to look at one of the people and I was accidentally getting the campfire and vice versa. And that's because the actual selection um, work that I'd done was pretty, it was pretty rough. It was using the, the physics engine and was using whatever sort of boxes or, or spheres or whatever that I'd put in for the, um, for the physics uh, as as the um, thing that it was casting rays against to figure out whether you're looking at something or not. Uh, now this was fine to start with, you know, it was a good way to get things going initially. Um, you know, the math for it all is fairly complex and I was able to just plug it into the physics engine. But it wasn't a really good way of sort of carrying on as, as I went forward. Um, and there are a number of reasons why it wasn't great. Um, probably the major reason is that the geometry um, for, the, for the game, for the physics, had to um, exactly match the geometry that you tested uh, what the player was looking at against. And that meant that I had to have really high resolution geometry, you know, all these trees, triangles had to actually be um, exactly the same, uh, you know, as, as what you see. They had to be in the physics engine like that. So what I've done is just completely replaced um, the, the the ray casting code with my own custom code. So it's actually faster um, because I'm able to optimize it specifically for my purposes. And so, and it's also completely perfect. So now, when you're looking at this guy's arms or whatever as he's walking, um, if you're looking at his arms, then it, sh it picks up him, and if you if or his head or whatever. But if if you're not, then um, yeah, then it'll it'll see past him. And so, you know, for a first person shooter or something that's kind of expected for a game like this, it's perhaps not quite so necessary, but I think it's, it's sort of the best solution in this, in this case. The only way that I could um, get away with not doing that is if I showed you the hitboxes um, that you were looking at. Like if, if it was just a sphere around this guy, for example, then once you moused into that sphere, you'd sort of expect it to then light up and show you what the edge of that sphere was. And that was an option that I can but in the end I thought that, that would probably be too imposing on on sort of the look of the game if nothing else and it's quite you know it's great that I can just look and know you know exactly like if I'm looking at him then it's him that's selected if I'm looking at that branch then it's the branch and if I'm looking just past it then it's the terrain and yeah it's all working really well so I'm, I'm very pleased with how all of that went and another benefit to doing that is that the physics engine now just has cones for trees so the cones are, are defined in the um, blender files for these trees and if you chop down a tree and the branches fall uh, like you know if one branch falls from this tree into this one then it'll just bounce off the, the trunk but not really worry about all these leafy bits that you wouldn't really expect it to bounce off necessarily anyway so it allows me much finer grained control over what the physics are um, for the actual physics engine so another thing that I've been working on is the building so I've been adding these thatch, thatch walls and thatch uh, roofs so there used to be a sort of branch shelter that I had in there. I never really liked the look of that anyway, but I think that that's going to cause a bit of problems with um, just, it's just a bit unnecessary. It's kind of nice if I can keep things in this layout of sort of having a, a big square that gives you enough space for a certain number of things. So I'll probably, you know, I might make a couple of other um, simple structures maybe even one that's just branches without the thatch but this this is pretty likely to be the um one of the you know really first structures that you can build this was also a good way for me to just flesh out the the new mechanics they had that um, previously only worked with campfires where they store up the resources for each component first and then place them afterwards and so um yeah and also just how they're sort of building stuff so this is one one piece of hay has created this thatch wall segment and I think it's I think it's working pretty well there's some issues with sort of the modeling process as far as you know making the edge of this match up with the edge of the next one um, you can see there's there's a seam there and it's really difficult for me to get rid of that without having um, Z fighting issues and things so I've still got probably a bit of work to do there but the, the whole idea is that this this thatch um, you know it's, it's hay in this case but it, that you could use uh, leaves or um, you know particularly palm leaves in, in different uh, biomes or climates um, and sort of con you, you know construct the same thing but have it look different just like how these branches were um, pine branches instead of birch branches. 
Another thing that's been bugging me a little bit during development is how these guys have just been walking off and, and gathering all the fruit and just getting kind of stuck, just wandering off. And really, you know, you're wanting to focus on, on building whatever and they're just, you know, it's just annoying. So I've been really thinking a lot about how to improve that, how to, you know, make the game fun because it's just so important. You can't have them, you know, being frustrating all the time. So uh, part of what I was thinking about with, you know, how, how they were walking off to these bushes is that there was really no way for you, for you as the player to improve that because they could only carry one at a time. They'd sort of, you know, come over, they'd, they'd pick all six of the fruit and then they'd just eat one and then just walk off. And I mean, you could get them to store them, but still it's the same process, right? They sort of come over, pick all six of them and then carry them one at a time back. So you don't really gain anything from it. So I've changed it now so that they can actually carry multiple um, items and in fact she's doing that now she's picking up um, a branch uh, multiple branches and even though I haven't actually done the rendering of that yet the server knows that she's carrying a, a number of branches and she'll drop them off um, you know one at a time here so I'm part way through you know the work to do that and I think that's going to really um, really improve the, the gameplay mechanic because then you've actually got an incentive to tell them to harvest a bunch of raspberry bushes and then um, pile them all up and stockpile so the player has control to make things more efficient, which is part of what makes things fun. So I've also done a bit of work to, to do with all the sort of user interface for these um, icons and things. I've sort of changed when they fade in and out and how they scale and, and just trying to improve um, things. Same with the sapien markers. And in fact, the sapien markers now are using a um, 3D mesh for the, for the icon which is, um, you know, just it's something that I'm trying out. I'm not really sure if I'll stick with that. It's mostly to do with my workflow. So these are still using a normal map, um, which means, you know, with a normal map, um, you know, it looks good, but it means that I have to actually, you know, design this icon in Illustrator and then export out uh, a bitmap and turn that into a normal map through some process and then load that up into the game engine and potentially make different sizes for different um, you know, use cases and stuff. And it's just a bit of a pain. And I thought, you know, why not just make a 3D model and plop it in there? So that's what's what's happening with this one. Um, they sort of both have their, their pluses and minuses, um, and I'm not sure yet which way I'll go, but I just thought I'd try that out. So another thing that I've been working on is just how these sort of markers work as far as um, when, when they can't actually do something. So at the moment there are two storage areas, one of them's got logs in it, one of them's got branches. So these are all fine, they can pick all of these up and carry them across. But if I go over and find some rocks and try to queue these up, then they're now red and the sapiens will completely ignore them and the idea is when you hover over it it'll tell you why they're red. Um, and this will work across you know, most of the game when you're trying to build things or whatever. If something you know, can't be done for a reason it'll have a different coloured marker. So the reason that these can't be um, can't, uh, why they're red and they're ignored is because there's nowhere to store them. So if I then created another um, storage area, I have to wait for them to come and do that. But once that's built, then those markers will immediately um, change colour. And in fact, they have changed colour because it already is built. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I should also mention I've, I've been working on some new music. So again, this is another new track. Uh, so there's now two sort of main tracks that I've done myself. There's two tracks that I've licensed and I'm not sure if I'll be using. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I'm, I, this, I don't quite like this one as much as the last track that I've done. But man, I just love making the music, eh? And I, I don't know, I'll just keep making tracks and keep making them and keep making them. And you know, some of them might not be used or whatever. But um, it's just, it's fun having a, a reason to make music and, uh, you know, knowing that, that some of it's actually going to be used. Um, it's just a great thing to, that I really enjoy. So other than that I've actually probably spent oh, I don't know maybe a week of the last couple of weeks just fixing little glitches and things as well. Uh, there were a number of things like when you queued up a, a chop order the tree would just vanish momentarily um, just as a converted state between sort of this um, transient tree that doesn't really have any stored state into a um, you know an object that the server sort of cares about and knows about. So that's fixed. Uh, there were some other visual glitches when you zoomed around too that are now fixed. I'm still kind of refining all of that stuff the the other thing is that the rivers are a lot more um sort of frequent now there's there's more variety in the terrain there's you know that's a lake over there that's one of these sort of joining points 
um, between multiple rivers. And I, you know, I've really decided to, to go down this route of, of sort of focusing on, on the gameplay side of things. And so, yeah, rivers as kind of highways in between different different biomes is sort of the idea. Um, so, you know, at the moment we've just got one biome. So I think that basically or each of these lakes is going to be the center of, of a biome. Uh, and they may spread out over across a couple of lakes or whatever, but that's sort of the general idea so that you'll have a lot of kind of uh, variation. And that's not at all realistic. You know, in, in reality, you'd, you'd be going miles and miles and miles before you saw any difference. But the problem is these guys are going to take forever to go miles and miles and miles. Just getting to that lake would be a pretty, pretty big effort for them. So I want, I want you to have a bit of variety and I want you to be able to, you know, only have specific resources in certain biomes. And you shouldn't have to start a whole new game in order to, to explore new uh, biomes. So I'm just sort of trying to be realistic about, about you know, what, how this game is going to work. So that's probably most of what I've done in the last couple of weeks. Uh, from here, I'm sort of carrying on focusing on gameplay, carrying on and just trying to make this early stuff fun. Uh, it's getting there, you know, it, it, I've made some decent improvements in the last couple of weeks, but I really, um, yeah, I, I don't want to keep adding content until, until I know that I've got a good, solid, fun game platform to begin with. And yeah, it, it's not there yet. So I want to focus on that more before carrying on adding more buildings and, and stuff. Once, once I'm a bit happier with this really early game stuff, probably my next plan is to carry on with the sort of hunting and tool making. And from there, I'm likely to work on farming. I think farming is probably going to be a little bit earlier on in the game than I had first anticipated. Um, just because I think it's going to be a really fun mechanic. I don't want people to have to wait too long. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to adding that. And also I just want to explore how it's going to work. And I think, you know, it's going to have some bearing on on how the other um, components of the game work too. So yeah. But anyway, that's all for this week. Please wishlist Sapiens on Steam. It's there right now. The link is in the description. And we'll see you again next time. Cheers.